All right, so you want to make money with Blender. Let's just get straight to the point. Let me start by telling you a little bit about how this channel is doing right now, revenue wise, because it's important for context later on. So this channel right now gets an RPM of around 100 rupees or 1.2 dollars on average, which just means I get paid 100 rupees or 1.2 dollars on average for every thousand views that my channel gets. My most successful video on this channel that is almost about to hit a million views has made me about 63,000 rupees or $750 in total till now. On a good month, this channel makes about 40 to 50,000 rupees or $400 to $600. On a bad month, it makes about 10,000 to 20,000 rupees or $100 to $200. My Patreon has been going well too in the recent months, mostly because of these short films that I've been making for a lot of my long format tutorials and that currently pays me around $400 to $600 every month. But that is very recent and fueled completely by the success of that one video I showed you earlier. On top of that, you add the occasional sponsorship every few months, which can literally pay anything between $500 to $3,000, depending on how consistently you get good number of views on your channel. And you're actually making a full-time living as an artist now, especially if you're living in a country like India, like I do. But this just happened six months ago or so. Exactly one year back, the situation was much, much worse, much, much more dire. I can't tell you how bad it was. But I made some changes last year that has eventually led to this success, if you can call it that. And this video is all about that. This video is all about what changed. What changed that I don't have to look for another how to make money with Blender video ever again. So let me tell you how it all got started out for me. So I am from a middle class family where obviously there was no scarcity of money per se, but there was no abundance of it either. But we lived in the age of the internet where people exactly like us were making buttloads of money from the internet right in front of us. So we wanted a piece of that pie too. But to be honest, that's not usually the thought that goes on in your head when you initially start exploring a weird little curiosity or hobby like Blender. Like I think for most of us watching, we played video games when we were kids, we liked video games, we wanted to know how they were made. And that's how we landed in this whole world of 3D and CGI and VFX, I assume. We start watching a few tutorials, start genuinely learning the craft and the tool and actually making an effort to get better at it all. But then one morbid day, we come across one of these how to make money videos on the internet and immediately our poor middle class mindset kicks in and we start thinking, hey, I think it's high time I started making some money from this half learned skill that I'm getting pretty good at. All these other people are, so why not me? And I think that's exactly what happened to me. And believe it or not, but for the next six years or so, I worked on several mediocre freelance projects with excruciatingly low pay with the most irritating client base you can imagine, while barely making any progress in Blender itself too. Because all I cared about at that point was the money and nothing else. I chased just the money. And I think that was my biggest mistake. I got the opportunity to start making money with Blender before I gave myself the opportunity to get better at it all first. And I know it sounds preachy, and trust me, I hated it too when people said you can't let the thought of money dictate your artistic journey. And I know, when you don't have sufficient money, money is all you're ever going to be thinking about. It's hard to detach your decisions from your financial situation, I, I get that. And I'm not saying don't chase that money either, I think any sane middle class person would, exactly like I did. But one year down the line, two years down the line, or in my case, five, six years down the line, there's gonna be a point in time, if you were really passionate about this whole thing when you started out, you're bound to start questioning this mindless hustle you've been on for so long that has only been empowering you with money and nothing else. And not even extravagant money, just peanuts, really, in comparison to what you could actually be making if you really put the effort into getting good at it first. And that's the change I made almost a year back. I brought my focus back onto getting good first and I assumed that the money will sooner or later automatically follow. And I know what you're thinking right now, that's your tip, that's your million dollars tip get good first <laughs> and I'm sorry but yeah that's all I've got for you in this video and I think it's a much better tip if you ask me than to tell you some six obsolete weird little ways to make passive income from blender like most of these other videos do because I don't think it matters what you end up doing it could be freelancing it could be selling add-ons and assets it could be nfts if that's your thing it won't matter what you do if you don't focus on getting good first, you're gonna end up clicking on several more of these how to get rich from Blender videos and never understand why everyone's making good money and you are not. It's because you thought about the money first and Blender second, like I did for the longest time. You will make peanuts because peanuts were all you had to offer from your end as well. But let me stop preaching for a minute and actually tell you some practical tips and tell you how I would do it all today if I had to do it all over again. So this is what I would do. Step one will always be to get good. Not get good, but just change the focus on trying to get good. But how do you do that? How do you get good? That's a good question. And there are a lot of answers to that question. But I think the most straightforward way to get good 
is by finishing projects one after the other continually for a long enough time and making sure every subsequent project is better than the previous one in some way or the other. That's it. Don't overcomplicate it, just decide what you want to make and just get to it. That's all it takes, I think, to get good in the long term. If you get stuck somewhere, that's where resources like YouTube and Google and all these other resources like Discord servers and subreddits and forums will come in handy. Another great resource for learning Blender and getting good at it would be Skillshare. Derek Elliott, a really well-known creator in the Blender space, has very recently shot a bunch of Skillshare original series covering a variety of topics ranging from starting out with Blender to lighting and materials in Blender, all the way to two super high-quality product renders and their full breakdowns. Another awesome new initiative by the Skillshare team has been what they are calling Learning Paths, which are basically just curated learning modules about a myriad of topics with hand-selected courses that they've selected themselves for an easier frictionless learning experience. I've been checking out the Unleash Your Virtual Creations with Unreal Engine Learning Path recently that guides you from the basics of Unreal Engine to creating a whole FPS game at the end of it and I've been enjoying it a lot. So you don't even have to put the effort to look for specific courses. Skillshare will even do that for you. So head on to Skillshare.com using the first link in the description. The first 500 people to use that link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So grab that deal before it runs out. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. But for now, let's get back to the original point I was trying to make in this video and explore the next few steps as well. So you've taken the difficult steps to change your focus from money to getting better first. And you have now with this new mindset finished your first project. But now what? Now, I would suggest uploading it on social media sites like Instagram or Twitter or on TikTok if your country has that. And that's it. Upload it and expect nothing from it. No views, no virality. Just post it so you can call this project done. If you're lucky enough, someone somewhere with a little more experience than you will give you some constructive feedback on it, which is the best you can hope from it for now. But even that is a rarity when just starting out. And you shouldn't even be worrying about that now. All you should be focusing on now is getting started on that next project, keeping in mind that the only goal with this one is to make it slightly better than the last one. And that's it. And you get on this train of repeating this process one project after the other, focusing on nothing else but getting better. Trust me when I say this, at some point, while your full focus has been on just producing subsequently better renders, one of these artworks is going to pop off to the mainstream audience, and that's when the DMs will start rolling in. Believe me, I have made barely any reels on my Instagram account, but one of them somehow got the traction of a wider audience base. And let me tell you, I get inquiries about commission work almost every day because of it, just because someone somewhere liked it so much that they would like to pay me to make something similar like it for them. And this is from just one video working out. Imagine what multiple videos popping off will do for you. And it will take time. It could take months or even years, if I'm being honest. But you're gonna have to keep your head down and just keep working. Because ideally, at the core of it all, your ambition is to just get better at the craft and nothing else. If you can just do this one simple thing, which is so much easier said than done, I can promise you the money and everything else along with it will just follow. I can't tell you how certain I am of this fact. A little shift in your mindset, that's all you need right now. But that was all just an overview, let's talk specifics now. When that first DM kicks in, the first and the only challenge really you're gonna face now is how to price yourself, how to price your work. And the only answer I have for that question is my own experience. This is how I learned to price myself. When I got approached by my first client, I thought all I deserved to be paid was $5. So I asked for $5. And they were okay with that. So I asked for that same amount for a long time until one day I realized, hey, I feel like I'm doing a lot more work than $5. I think I should be asking for $10. And I did. And most people were okay with that too. And a few weeks later, I bumped that number up to $50. And straight away, my next five clients immediately said no. They wanted it to be done for $10. But I didn't budge because I felt that was a fair price that I deserved to be paid. And to my surprise, a week later, someone did agree to pay me $50 for that same work. And I immediately realized that it is better to wait for that one yes that is ready to pay a fair price for the work that you're going to be doing for them than to work on five underpriced projects just because you're afraid to lose $10 dollars on a project in the short term and i just kept doing that 50 to 100 100 to 200 200 to 500 and today i'm not kidding i'm not even afraid to ask for five thousand dollars or even ten thousand dollars for some of my clients so in short what i'm trying to say is you are going to figure it out don't set yourself as low as five dollars like i did that's too low but ask what you think is a fair price according to you and you would be shocked to know what people are ready to pay you only if you're good enough though first but yeah i think that's it 
that's what I would do if I were to pursue my freelance career all over again. Honestly, this is what I would do even if I was looking for a job in the VFX industry, because Instagram and Twitter work as great portfolio sites as well. Because that same reel I showed you earlier has gotten me offers from several small to mid-sized animation companies for a full-time job as well. So I think this system works for both ways. You could do what I do right now as well. I shifted my focus to try and get good first. And I feel like I hit a level eventually where other people wanted to learn how I got there. And that's where a YouTube channel like this and a Patreon page subsequently can come in financially. So this system is sound even for that career path. I think I can even apply it to the add-ons and assets industry. If you shift your focus on making a good useful asset or add-on rather than just thinking about how much money you could be making from it, you're gonna have a much higher chance of success than most of these other products and assets on Blender Market or Gumroad. In short, all I'm trying to say is the moral of the story is shift your ambition from I wanna be rich to maybe I wanna be good at Blender. And I feel like everything else you aspire to be will just follow. Otherwise, just like I did during those 5-6 years of my life, you will be scraping a part-time living, wondering why you are not making any progress in life and keep watching more and more of these how to make money videos looking for an easy cheap way out when none exist in the real world. Yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.